Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. Today I'm going to be discussing something that's kind of controversial. I'm going to be talking about 410 slugs and deer hunting. I know a lot of you guys are thinking 410 and deer hunting don't go together, but here in Kentucky it's actually legal to deer hunt with a 410 shotgun slug. I just want to help people make the right decision on what kind of slug they should be using. Today I'm going to demonstrate with the Remington rifled slugs and the Brennicky slugs the difference between these two types of slugs uh, the, the Remington there's a lot of other brands with this same style of slug it's a foster slug or an American rifled slug I want to show you guys why in a 410 you probably shouldn't be using this. The Brenny key is the way to go. I've actually got a couple of clear ballistics gel blocks set up over here. As you can see, I've got two gel blocks set up back to back. The reason I'm using two blocks is I suspect that the Brenny key slug will likely pass through one block. Uh, it's going to give us at least 16 inches of penetration. Those blocks are 16 inches long each, so I've got a total of 32 inches there on the table. This Remington Foster Slug, it'll be lucky to penetrate seven or eight inches. That's, that's me giving it some uh, extra credit here just in case it penetrates farther than I suspect it will. But these Foster style slugs are pushed to high velocities in the little 410. This is a one fifth ounce slug or about 87 and a half grains. The box lists them at 1800 and 30 feet per second so it's trucking and as soon as it hits something it's not like when people think of shotgun slugs you think of the big 12 gauge slug that just punches through brush and whatever the 410 slugs not like that as soon as it hits something it's going to shatter it's going to break into pieces and it's over with it's not going to penetrate much at all however the Brennicky style slug acts more like a cast bullet it's going to stay together and every time I've ever shot anything with these it gives really good penetration so I'll be highly surprised today if it stops in the first gel block let me cut these two slugs out of these shells and show you what they look like all right so I just wasted two 410 shotgun slugs but I really wanted you guys to see this this is the Brennicky slug this is the Remington rifled slug or foster slug you'll hear me call it it's a hollow base 87 and a half grains or one fifth of an ounce on the box it rates it at 1830 feet per second the Brennicky slug is 109 grains on the box it rates it at 1500 feet per second at the muzzle now I don't know what barrel length either one of these were tested out of but I'm going to be shooting shooting them out of the 24 inch TriStar today, the TriStar turkey gun. The Brennicky slug, as you can see, has a wad connected to it that stays attached while it goes down range. So when it makes contact with the target, that wad is still going to be attached to the slug. It does come out. Here's the lead only. But this Brennicky slug. It's going to act more like a cast bullet, like a 40 caliber cast bullet, while this Remington slug is going to disintegrate. It's going to come apart as soon as it makes contact. I have shot enough of these to know what's going to happen with this slug. And I'm going to demonstrate this in the ballistics gel. I've got the gel set up at 25 yards from my bench. I'm going to shoot it at 25 yards because 410 slugs are a relatively close range affair. Hopefully you're aware of that. If you're deer hunting with 410 slugs, you do need to be fairly close. So I'm going to use 25 yards. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good distance to test these from. And I've got the two gel blocks set up. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road. 
All right, I'm going to start out with the Remington rifled slug. All right, so this is what we got with the Remington Foster Slug or Rifled Slug. <laughs> this might surprise some of you guys. Most of the lid stopped at about the two and a half inch mark. Sorry about my tape measure. I use that thing a lot. It's getting marked up. But, but you can see that's two and a half inches. That's where most of the lid stopped. The deepest fragment penetrated to just a little over four inches about four and a quarter inches so definitely not something you'd want to use for anything that requires any amount of penetration look at that it blows up as soon as it hits I do want to mention here and especially after seeing these results in the clear gel block Remington does list the use of this little slug here for big game. So you can see how that might confuse a new hunter or somebody looking for a proper slug for deer. They might think this is it. It's not. Now for the Brinicky Close Encounter. All right, so here was our Foster Slug, or Remington Slug, and here's our Brinicky. Check this out. Our Foster Slug, the maximum penetration was a little over four inches. The Brinicky gave us about 17 and a half inches of penetration. And look how that slug stayed together. So a big difference in the way these two slugs perform. Piece of the wadding broke off just right between where I've got the two gel blocks mated up. But the lid slug itself stayed together. Whereas the Remington Foster Slug, or Rifled Slug, just blew up on impact. Big difference. If you're going to shoot anything with a 410 Slug that needs penetration, use those Brennickies. That's my favorite Slug for the 410, period. I realize that some of you guys are going to say, yeah but this is just bare gel. How would those two slugs perform on an actual meat and bone target? Well, I actually did a video on that a couple of years ago. I'll have it linked in the description if you want to take a look at it. All right, guys, so usually when I set up some kind of an ammo test out here on the range, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm learning as I go. Today, I knew what was going to happen and it happened pretty much exactly like I thought it would. And the reason I knew is because of experience. I have shot a ton of those Foster style slugs in the 410, and I've shot a ton of those Brennicky 410 slugs. The Brennickys always penetrate well. The Foster style slugs always blow up on impact. Today I was using two and a half inch slugs. 
the same thing is going to happen if you use three inch slugs. The Brennicky is going to penetrate deep. The Foster style is going to blow up on impact. It's just the way it is. So I hope you guys that are going to deer hunt with the 410 this year take that in consideration. Now if you're just shooting groundhogs and varmints around the farm, that's the, those little Foster style slugs are great for that. Uh, low chance of ricochet, they blow up on impact. Uh, they're really good for that. But if you're shooting bigger stuff, like deer, you want that good penetration. You want to respect the animal you're hunting. You don't want to blow a big four-inch wound out of that deer and have it die three days later and let the coyotes eat it. Uh, not a good way to go. So uh, you want that deep penetration. That 40 caliber hole is going to, going to bleed that deer out good um, as long as you get a good hit on it. That's, that's the main thing with anything you use is shot placement. That's why I used 25 yards today. 410 slugs are not a long range affair. Take that into consideration. Don't be popping off 200 yard shots with a 410 slug. Uh, you, likelihood of success is not very good. But I think that's all I had to say in today's video. I do want to thank my subscribers. Guys, we're getting close to 100,000. I think we've got a real nice community in the comment section. I know this video is probably going to draw some wild comments just because of the topic here but usually we have a really good uh, community in the comments section a lot of people answering each other's questions and stuff like that it's just uh, the thing about my channel is i've never asked anybody to subscribe i don't get on here on my videos and say hit that like button and hit the subscribe and the bell i just don't do that stuff i want you to want to be here i don't want to beg you to be here the people that are here in my comment section are here because they want to be. Not because I ask them to. And that makes the comment section better in my opinion. So I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. Those gel blocks aren't cheap. Uh, stuff like that is all funded through my Patreon page. Anybody that wants to help out, it's always linked in the description. But I think that's all I've got. And I'll talk with you guys again soon.